Hello, I will share three true stories with you. Case one, imagine suddenly losing the ability to speak and walk. That's what happened to Jessica, a 32-year-old woman who had just given birth to her baby four days earlier. While caring for her daughter, Jessica started feeling dizzy. She tried to get up from the armchair but couldn't. Her legs were shaky. She called her husband, who quickly noticed her slurred speech. In less than 10 minutes, he took her to the hospital near their home. She was examined in the emergency room, underwent a CT scan, and received thrombolytics intravenously, which instantly restored her speech and leg strength and resolved her dizziness. Case two. This case involved a 62-year-old lawyer named Hugo. He was stressed about his credit card debts and was working overtime. However, he never took care of his health. He had obesity, diabetes and hypertension all poorly managed. At two in the morning, while leaning over his computer, he experienced a severe headache. It was so intense that he immediately knew something was terribly wrong. He called his sister, a nurse, and then passed out. He woke up 10 days later in the ICU, having been operated on, and the doctors had just removed the sedation from the medically induced coma. Case three, another woman, 58-year-old Regina, suffered from arrhythmias, but hadn't visited a cardiologist in a few years. She was at a family party when she began to feel tingling in her face. Her daughter noticed that her mouth was crooked and Regina confirmed this by looking in the mirror. She was immediately taken to the hospital, but on the way her mouth returned to normal and the tingling stopped. Nevertheless, she remained hospitalized after undergoing an MRI. What do these three cases have in common? All three suffered a stroke. This is the topic of today's video. Here you will learn to recognize the main signs and symptoms of a stroke. If you want to protect yourself or a family member from this disabling disease, watch until the end. I will bring you lots of information you might not know. A stroke can happen to anyone, even young and healthy individuals. Did you know that stroke is the leading cause of death in Brazil? Every two minutes, a Brazilian suffers a stroke. And what's more frightening is that many people do not recognize the signs and symptoms in time. But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you've activated the bell to receive notifications. Share this video with people you know. I'm sure many will be interested in the topic. And tell me, have you ever had a stroke or do you know someone who has? From which part of the world are you? Write it down below. Let's go. What is a stroke or cerebral infarction? A stroke is a medical emergency because the blood your heart pumps cannot reach a part of your brain. What happens when blood doesn't reach a part of your brain? That area will lack oxygen and nutrients, killing thousands of neurons every second. That's why we say time is brain. Every minute counts. Every minute is important. When I graduated just over 20 years ago, when someone with a stroke arrived at the emergency room, we didn't have much we could do. We performed a CT scan, and if there was no bleeding, we gave aspirin and waited for the consequences. Today, it's very different. We have effective medications to dissolve the clot and restore much of the function. We also have procedures that can open arteries. I've seen miraculous cases where patients arrived at the emergency room unable to speak or walk, and after the infusion of the medication, the person could speak clearly, squeeze my hand firmly, and immediately stop the dizziness like magic. So if you or any of your family members are experiencing the symptoms I will discuss soon, you cannot just sit and wait for time to resolve the symptoms. Don't do that. Take the person to the emergency room immediately better safe than sorry. I'll repeat, time that passes is brain tissue you are losing. Time is brain. The faster you get to the hospital, the faster the doctor will see you, the faster they can administer the medication, or even perform a type of catheterization that will open the affected artery in the brain or remove the clot. And with that, they might save memories, the ability to walk, speak, recognize objects, and yes, save lives. Again, stroke has become the leading cause of death in Brazil, surpassing heart attacks. It doesn't matter how old you are, whether you have health problems or not. 
Ah, and strokes are occurring more and more in young people who seem healthy. Waiting to see if it improves can have a very high cost. The person can die or be left with disabilities that may last a lifetime. So don't wait. If you understood this, the video was worth it. What are the stroke symptoms you need to know that you must remember? Let's recall the cases I mentioned. Sudden vision loss, dizziness, loss of motor coordination or balance, sudden and intense headache, the worst headache the person has ever felt, like a thunderclap, numbness or tingling in one arm or leg, or on one side of the body, weakness in the arms or legs or on the face, especially on one side of the body, difficulty speaking, slurred speech, difficulty understanding what is being said, sudden confusion, problems seeing in one or both eyes, fainting. If you are with someone and they were normal and suddenly started experiencing any of these symptoms, the first thing you have to think about almost immediately is a stroke. You will learn now a very powerful tool that can help you identify a stroke quickly. Remember the word SAMU, the ambulance service. S is for smile. Ask the person to show you a smile. Pay attention. Does the smile seem unbalanced? One side of the mouth refusing to rise, staying drooped. This can be a warning sign that something is wrong. A is for arms. Move on to asking her to give you a hug or simply ask the person to raise both arms. Is one of the arms heavy, weak or even unable to lift? This is a worrying sign that should not be ignored. M is for music. Now ask the person to sing their favorite song or repeat a simple sentence. Does the person's voice drag, stumble over words or sound strangely distorted as if they were struggling to form sounds? Another warning sign. U is for urgency. If you observe any of the signs, do not hesitate. Do not waste time questioning. Act now. Call SAMU or emergency service or rush to the nearest hospital without delay. Every second counts in the fight to minimize stroke damage. The longer you wait, the greater the potential consequences. What are the types of stroke? There are types of stroke. The ischemic stroke, which is the main one. About 85% of cases which happens when the artery that irrigates that part of the brain was blocked, not allowing blood to reach that place. It can happen when a clot has broken off from somewhere, from the heart, from the carotid artery, and circulated through the arteries, falling into the brain and obstructing the blood flow from that area. Or when the blood vessels of the brain narrow or are filled with a fat plaque, causing a thrombosis of that area. And the second type of stroke is the hemorrhagic stroke, or AVCH, caused by the bursting of an aneurysm or due to a blood vessel that ruptured, bleeding into the brain. There are two types of hemorrhagic stroke. The intracerebral hemorrhage, which is the most common cause of hemorrhagic stroke, which happens when an artery in the brain ruptures, flooding that part with blood, or the subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is bleeding in the area between the brain and the meninges whose main cause is the rupture of a cerebral aneurysm. And a question many people have, what is a cerebral aneurysm? I'll explain. A cerebral aneurysm is like a small bubble that forms on the wall of an artery that irrigates the brain. With high pressure over time, this bubble can grow, and as it grows, the wall becomes thinner and more fragile, like a balloon that you're blowing up before you exert a lot of effort to start filling it. But over time, you can do it faster. The bladder becomes thinner. And here is the part that really concerns us. If that bubble bursts, that is if the aneurysm ruptures, then we have the AVCH, causing bleeding in the brain, known as subarachnoid hemorrhage, like the second case I mentioned, where he called his sister and passed out. He was left without sequelae, but he was lucky. What is a TIA? A TIA is a transient ischemic attack, a mini-stroke caused by a temporary obstruction of a cerebral artery which clears completely in a few minutes or hours, thus not causing permanent damage. The person undergoes an MRI and sees nothing. So what were all those symptoms? It was not a stroke, but a TIA. And here you have to pay double attention because it's your body showing that if you don't seek help quickly and identify the cause of that warning, you might soon have a stroke. It's throwing sparks. It's about to catch fire. 
Why can a stroke cause so many different symptoms? Because a person might not be able to speak, while another may be bedridden for the rest of their life. Simple, the brain is the most complex organ we have, and the symptoms are related to the area of the brain where the blood was blocked. For example, the speech center for most people is located in the left half of the brain. So a stroke that affected the left hemisphere of the brain will cause difficulty speaking and understanding, in addition to being associated with weakness or paralysis of the right side of the body. A stroke in the right hemisphere of the brain would make the left side of the body weak or paralyzed, and there may be an inability to locate or recognize parts of the body, memory problems, and changes in personality and behavior. If the stroke occurs in the cerebellum, there may be problems with balance, walking, coordination, dizziness, nausea, and vomiting. And in the brainstem, the brain's ability to control breathing, blood pressure, and swallowing may be lost. What are the main causes of a stroke? First and foremost, high blood pressure. This is the main risk factor for both ischemic and hemorrhagic strokes. So if you have high blood pressure, take good care of your blood pressure. Smoking can also cause cerebral aneurysms and also increase the risk of thrombosis and clots. Cardiac arrhythmias, such as atrial fibrillation, increases the risk of having a stroke up to six times. Heart diseases like an enlarged heart and valve problems, like mitral stenosis, can increase the risk of intracavitary clots, which can break loose and fall into the brain. Diabetes increases the risk of stroke two to four times. Alcoholism can increase the risk of hypertension, cardiac arrhythmia, and alcoholic cardiomyopathy, high cholesterol, which can form plaques in the carotids and cerebral arteries, obesity. The excess weight burdens the entire circulatory system. A sedentary lifestyle, a diet high in salt, high in fat, low in fruits, drug abuse family history of a stroke, here mainly hemorrhagic stroke, if someone in your family had bleeding in the head, find out if you have an aneurysm that might be about to burst who has already had a TIA, that is that mini stroke, or even one who has already had a stroke. Why are strokes increasing in young people? Some risk factors such as high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, obesity, a sedentary lifestyle and cardiac arrhythmias are increasingly present in the young population. Think about it. How many young people do you know who have these problems? I see them in my office. It's increasing everything. And the increase in strokes in young people is worrying because young people are family providers. And a stroke can have a devastating impact on their lives, preventing them from working or returning with limitations. What are the treatments for stroke? The treatments depend on the type of stroke, whether it's hemorrhagic or ischemic. And there are two stages of treatment, trying to interrupt a stroke while it's happening and then trying to overcome the sequelae caused by the stroke and also trying to prevent another stroke. What are the treatments we have for an ischemic stroke? As I said, it has evolved a lot in these last 20 years. A person can receive intravenous thrombolytic, TPA, which serves to dissolve the clot. And again, here comes the issue of time. The person can only receive this medication four and a half hours after the onset of symptoms in most cases. In some cases, it can be extended. And there is also the option of performing thrombectomy or embolectomy, when the doctor inserts a thin catheter that reaches the brain and can suck the clot or even remove the clot. And if you had a hemorrhagic stroke, if the bleeding is very large and the patient is comatose or very sleepy, Neurosurgery may be necessary to correct vascular anomalies, such as aneurysms or arteriovenous malformations, reduce the hematoma or drain the intracranial pressure. But strict control of blood pressure is always important as it can increase bleeding. How can you prevent a stroke? You should reduce those risk factors I mentioned. Have well-controlled blood pressure. Never smoke. If you smoke, you have to quit control your blood sugar well. Eat right, lots of fruits, vegetables, whole grains. Always keep your cholesterol on target. Be physically active. If you are overweight or obese, try to lose weight. The more controlled your risk factors, the lower your chances of stroke. And you, what are you doing to prevent a stroke? Remember to subscribe. 
and see you in the next video.